So uh, last night we uh, deployed the first update to the Luna testnet, basically fixing some issues with uh, blockchain synchronization, the order of transactions that were uh, being applied to the accounts tree. Um, we're also synchronizing the mempool now when we connect to other peers, so no transactions uh, are lost when peers frequently enter into the network. Uh, we also introduced uh, support for uh, WebRTC in uh, Safari and Edge. Um, so that seems to be working well, and also the, the hard fork uh, worked pretty well that we uh, did last night. So um, now we can focus on, you know, adding new features or adding the final features to the to the protocol for the mainnet, uh, but also stuff like multi-signature wallets and um, and um, hash time contracts. So uh, that will always have like a happy hard fork Sunday kind of thing over the next couple of uh, weeks since. We're here in the hackathon. We're probably going to be changing a lot of stuff. Uh, hopefully, not stuff that you know breaks the current uh, uh, testnet. Um, but we're, we're going to be providing pretty regular updates now, I think. Um, and also, uh, feature-wise, it also kind of converges now. So there's not so many things to do anymore. But we can really focus now on the more high-level application-level stuff of the protocol. So the accounts proof can also be used independently of the accounts tree chunk. Okay. okay. That's why it's, it's also a part of the account tree chunk, but it, all, it can. It's also, for example, the nano client uses it to prove its own balance, basically. Because the chunk has the array of nodes and the proof. The array of nodes that the chunk has are the same array that the proof per se has. No, that's why you have two. Okay. Uh -huh. And I was reading a lot about uh, Merkle trees and Patricia Merkle trees and theory about it. It's really cool. <laughs> we're, we're using the Patricia Merkle tree now, right? Because Patricia requires a radix of two, as I, if I read correctly. The, the idea basically was to kind of you know, have uh, different responsibilities. So, I mean, I have, a, I have a strong engineering background and I've done, you know, lots of projects in my life and uh, uh, do, I think, quite ha do have a bit of, you know, software engineering experience. And so I, and also what I really like is the, you know, the technical stuff, technical side of things. So that's basically where my focus is. So Robin, he can kind of have, you know, the, more of the the grand scheme of things in mind, so he can have more of the overarching conceptual and strategic and visionary uh, view on things, and maybe doesn't necessarily have to drill down into every technical implementation detail. And I think that kind of is where the um, you know where the responsibilities are. In a blockchain project, we have very high quality requirements, and, we, and that is primarily because we have to get things right in the first time. It's kind of hard to update a blockchain afterwards, or kind of fix bugs in the blockchain afterwards. It does work, but uh, it's certainly not as easy as just you know uploading the new version of your app into the Google App Store. Um, a blockchain, you know, pr processes value, money, essentially. So it will, ha will be under a lot of pressure. There will be very high financial incentives to break the system in order to you know, uh, have some sort of financial advantage. So it really has to be bulletproof. It has to be secure. It has to be available. Um, and it needs to be, uh, you know, we, it needs to be right the first time, basically. So we cannot like, you know, updated as as will uh, updated at will so um, I think those are the, the the primary requirements that make a blockchain project maybe special okay. from like a regular software uh, we'll do of course more performance optimizations we'll be optimizing stuff with a with a chain proof the interlink chain um, increasing verification times decreasing the, the the amount of data we need to download uh, also add missing features for the nano client, such as uh, retrieving a transaction history or proving that a particular transaction was included in a block. Um, and I think that's probably most of the, that covers most of the remaining core protocol features. And then we'll basically enter a, 
uh, a quality control hardening uh, phase, polishing phase, where we also have the backbone deprogram, stuff like that.